Hey there guys, Jim the Game Guru. Today's video, let's get into some Raccoon Tycoon. This is a game that I picked up not too long ago that fits a certain niche type of game, and it's a game that involves a center market that is constantly fluctuating. I absolutely love these types of games. I had very few games in my collection. This game, along with Harbor, Star Cartel, and Mystic Market is the other one. I would love to find more games beyond this that actually involve a center fluctuating market. I wouldn't say it's so much of an economic game. Yeah, it has money in it that you used to pay for things, but it's not something you're managing money. It's more of like, hey, there's goods, you can sell goods, you can gain goods, the market in the middle changes and constantly fluctuates throughout the game. And then you use your commodities and your money to buy buildings or towns or railroads in this case as well. Uh, I love the artwork in this game. It's really cool looking. And I, again, I love the style of game, the whole market fluctuating type of game. I just, I don't know, just something about it that I just love so much. And it's one of those love-hate relationships. Some, some board gamers absolutely hate that type of game. And some gamers love those type of games. So I'm going to dig in here, show you the components, do a quick how-to play in the comments below. If you know any other games beyond the four that I just mentioned earlier that actually involve that type of mechanics, I would love to know about those type of games. So then I can go ahead and research them and pick those up and add them to my library as well. But let's go ahead and dig into this game. If you're new here, please consider subscribing or following. All right, let's take a look at some of the components here for Raccoon Tycoon. So in the center, we have the main board, which has this really cool kind of picture of this woodland area that these animals live in. At the very top, we have the market for each one of the commodities. And as the commodities end up increasing in value, these markers are gonna go up on the board and then you'll be able to gain that much money from the money supply when you sell the commodities. Over here we have the town deck that you can actually purchase towns with commodities. Over here we have the railroads. These are the ones that get auctioned. So just because you wanna buy a railroad doesn't mean you can actually just take it right from the, the main board with the amount of money that's listed on the railroad cards. You actually have to auction to end up winning these. Then down here we have these buildings and these buildings could actually affect production of commodity as well as capacity for your production and I'll get into that as we kind of dig into this further. There are only a few basic buildings that will give you bonuses to commodities and then a lot of the other advanced buildings are in this pile. So we have a pretty, it's a pretty decent stack right here of building tiles. And then as we end up purchasing the, the buildings from this part right here, we'll just flip over another building building tile and then, then that becomes available for the next person to purchase. Over here we have the price and production deck. This deck is what will increase the price of commodities in the market and it will also allow players to take certain amount of commodities based on what's on the card. I have this set up for a two player game and right here what we have is we have three cards dealt to each player and then both players start off with $10. This is the first person token right there. I love the way that looks, looks really cute. So let's take a deeper dive into actually some of these components and see what they look like. Let's go into the price and production. It's very, very simple with the price and production deck. All these cards are pretty much the same, as you can see. They have a top part with the price and they have a bottom part with the production. So on your turn, if you choose the action of production, you're going to gain three commodity down here unless you have buildings that will allow you to gain more commodities than your typical three. Then on the, the top part here, price, this is what increases each one of the commodities listed here by one slot. Every slot, I believe, is, is difference by a dollar. Yeah, it looks like everything's by a dollar. So let's take a look at the buildings here. The buildings, they will have a name of a building on their tile. They will have the ability that it gives you. So like this one right here, you have the freight company that says you may sell two commodities during your turn. 
This one is also $25 to buy. Factory, your max production is five instead of three. That costs $40 to buy. Black Market, your max hand size is now five, and that costs 30 to buy. So what does max hand size mean? Because of the price of production, you only get three cards in your hand, right? This one will actually make it so you have five price and production hand cards in your hand. Warehouse is you get to store plus three commodities. You do have a pull a, a commodity limit of 10 that every player can store, but certain buildings will allow you to do more. So you have the title, you have the art, you have the ability, and you have the price at the very bottom. So let's take a look at some of the railroad cards. We'll go right in here. Very cute artwork in this, like I said before. So on a two-player game, a bunch of the railroad cards have to be removed out of the deck. So we have the Big Bear, we have Top Dog, Fat Cat. So these are the ones that kind of remain in the Railroad deck. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the ones that get removed as well here. So whenever you do a Railroad, you have to auction. This is a starting bid for the auction, it's five. Down here you have victory points right here. So what that means is this one will give you three victory points, but if you have identical railroads in your possession the more identical railroads you have the more points you get so with big bear you get three but if you have two big bears in your possession at the end of the game you get seven if you have three you get 13 points and if you have four you get 21 points so right down here it tells you kind of the additional bonus points you get when you have multiples. Now, let me show you the ones that get removed out of the game for a two-player game. These will obviously be in play in the deck when you play with up to five people. Uh, so we have Skunk Works, which is, I love that one. I don't know, something about that artwork right there that makes it look super awesome. You have Sly Fox Railroads. That looks really cool too. Uh, we got Tycoon with the raccoon on it. This is the artwork on the front of the game. And just because the name is the same, I like how they changed the artwork. So this tycoon has it like this, and then this one has it with like a female raccoon. So I really like that. That's a good touch they, they made on it. The towns, let's go ahead and get into that. These towns are worth a certain amount of points, right? Five victory points at the end of the game, plus two with the railroad, which means that every town and victory combination that you have at the end of the game, you'll get an additional two victory points. Down here is how much this river ridge right here costs. It costs five wheat or any eight commodities that you want to use to buy it. So you have the name, you have the artwork, you have the victory points at the end of the game, and then you have the cost at the bottom. And I believe these all have different names and different artwork. So I like how these towns are, they all, it's not like a repeating artwork for these. And they go from five victory points all the way down to two. When you put this town deck together, you have to order them in victory points from lowest to highest going down to the bottom. So every time you draw, as you get toward the later of the game, then eventually you'll get the, the higher valued ones. Now let's take a look at the money. The money is really, really interesting. I really thought the money was gonna be super, super cheap feeling in this game. I honestly thought it was gonna be like Monopoly money. To my surprise, this is not the thin paper Monopoly money. It actually, if you guys can hear that, that nice little sound in the air as I'm flipping through. These, this actually feels a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be. It actually, it's kind of hard to explain. It almost feels like paper that has been lightly laminated. So it's got this little bit of thickness, but yet at the same time, it's still paper, almost like a plastic paper combination. And I love the way they did that. The actual printing on there is really nice too. As you can see right there, I just, I, I mean, they did a great job printing that out. So the money, I'm actually thrilled. I think component-wise, this game has really hit it out of the park. I like the way the cards feel. The cards all feel nice and thick for the most part. Let me go into the manual a little bit too. Manual, well-printed, colorful, easy, easy, easy to read. Super easy to read. Goes into everything about setting it up, the different phases of the game. And then it goes into the end scoring right there. 
And it also gives you like a cheat sheet at the very end. So these are your actions that you can actually perform during the game, during every person's turn. You can either do a production, you can sell a commodity, you can uh, do a railroad auction, you can purchase a building, or you can purchase a town. And what happens is every person, as we go around the table, every person's going to take one of those actions. The game ends when there's no more towns to buy or there's no more railroads to buy. So let's go ahead and dig in. Let's do a quick playthrough. I'm just going to do a couple rounds here really fast. So again, you can do production, sell a commodity, railroad auction, purchase a building, or purchase a town. All right, so player one's going to go here. What they're going to do is I think they're going to go ahead and play one of their production stuff. So what are they going to do? And this right here takes two iron, right? Do I have anything that creates two iron? No, I do not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play this one right here. So this goes in the discard pile. So I'm going to grab any three of these that I want. And then this will go into the discard pile. I also have to increase the price up here. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the price first so I don't forget here. So the wine and the coal go up by one on the board. And then I get three of these, right? So I'm going to choose two wood and I'm going to choose uh, a wheat. Oh, and by the way, one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to start off with the starting commodity. And I'm going to start off with a coal here because whenever you set the game up, the players start off with a commodity of their choice. And player two, because they're not the first player, gets two commodity to start off with instead of one. So they're probably going to do this right here. So we'll give player two that. Okay, so this player, player one, is done. They ended up raising the price on the market by one for those two. And they ended up gaining some more commodity. Now what they're going to do is they're going to pull an extra another card from the deck to refill their hand back to three cards. So now we go ahead and go to player two. Are they going to play a production cost? I, mean, I don't know. Maybe not. Let's just do something different with player two just so we can show you the different aspects of the game. They're going to go ahead and buy one of these uh, buildings. So they're going to spend their 10 bucks. They're going to buy, what are they going to do? I don't know. Maybe they'll do this one right here. They'll do a vineyard, right? So they have a vineyard now. This is going to give them plus one wine. Now the cool thing about these basic buildings is they also have a, a flip side and if you wanted to buy another building later on and pay this cost the 15 to upgrade this building to this second side you can do that which then gives you two wine bottles whenever you gain your commodity so we have that there and this person gets changed right they get what four ones they get four ones as change another building will flip on over okay so this one right here is a coal iron trading firm it looks like one dollar per coal or iron sold that is kind of cool now this person over here is going to go now they realize they only have four dollars right so this person right here might just call an auction on one of these railroads say hey you know what four dollars there's no way in hell you're gonna go for this they might just go ahead and say you know i'm gonna go for the big bear i'm gonna go ahead and do this now this player too they can't do anything because they don't have enough money to outbid them. So whenever you do an auction, you go around the table and you say, okay, you start off with the we, you start off with the value right here, the dollar value at the bottom. You say, this is $5. Now the next person will say, okay, they'll have a choice. Do they want to go $6 or, or even higher? The next person could say $8 or whatever if they really want it really, really bad. And then they go to the next person and that person tries to outbid them. Now in a, in a two player game, it's a little different. In a two player game, the person starting the bid will, will start off with a certain number and then the second player either has to beat it or pass. That is it. And I like that for a two player game. And the reason why I like that is because it puts a little bit of pressure. Because if you're the, the person initiating the auction, you may want it really, really badly, but you have to start off with a higher value than what's on here in order for that other second, that second player to not beat you in the auction. But anyway, this player cannot match that or beat it. Well, actually cannot beat it, period. So here we're gonna go ahead and spend our five and we're gonna get the five back. So this player one now has a railroad. And then now we go ahead and flip over the next railroad, which is top dog. So that was player one. Now player two comes back. Now player two, what are they going to do? They only have four dollars. They could end up buying another building if they want. But they have this building right here that gives them an extra wine, right? And whenever you get multiple buildings that give you bonus commodities on your turn, you cannot 
take advantage of all the buildings that you have. You can only use one of the bonus commodities or one of the bonus production buildings that you have in play. Um, so that's the, that is the restriction with the bonus commodity and bonus production cards. So I, I think this player is going to go ahead and play, what are we gonna play? Maybe we'll do, ooh, we'll do this one. So they're gonna play this one. They're, they're gonna, it's, it's gonna give them a wheat, a coal, and a wine, and they get an extra wine because they have this building here that gives them an extra wine bottle, right? So they're gonna go ahead and play that. Oh, and the price of all of these go up. And you can see it's two wheat, box, and wine. So the wheat goes up two to three. The box goes up there, and the wine goes up by one, just like that. And now they get what? A wheat, a coal, and the two wine bottles, when you factor in the plus, the positive bonus they get from this building. So now they have all this. They have two wine bottles, they have two wheat, they have two box, and they have a coal. We need another card. So this player over here is gonna go, uh, okay, so the wine is up to $5, the wheat is up to three, the coal is up to four, and the whatever the box is, is up to four four dollars so they're gonna try to probably try to increase or maybe not maybe they'll try to buy one of these buildings yeah we'll do that so they'll go ahead and buy one of the buildings they're gonna buy the coal deposit right here that coal deposit gives them plus one coal and they're gonna put it right there next to the railroad they're gonna spend the five dollars on that no change no more money left they're they're done so now what flips over is export company Export company increased the price of a commodity $3 before selling. Wow. Player two is going to go. We could go for a railroad, but yeah, we could go for this railroad because this player one has no money and there's no way in hell they're going to be able to do anything. I don't think they're going to get money on this next turn either. So maybe what I'll do is we're going to go ahead and get some commodity and raise the price again. We're going to play this one here and they're going to go ahead and get a wood and iron bars, and they're gonna get some coal. And how many commodities do we have right now? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They do get an extra wine because of that building. So now they're at 10. They're at their max, okay? And the prices that go up are iron and the wine bottles. The wine bottle is up to six dollars right now okay so they are done they get another card that refills their hand this player over here is going to go and i think they're going to go ahead and try to get some goods so what they're going to do is they're going to do this one right here they're going to get two boxes and they're going to get a coal and they get an additional coal for their building bonus right there right so you get one more coal just like that. Three of these increase in price. Wheat goes up by one, coal goes up by one, and the box goes up by one to five now. If they're done, they get another card in their hand. This player over here is going to go, they can go for an auction in order for this, because I know player one can't doesn't have any money, so they can probably just go ahead and buy that straight up before they start selling some of this stuff. And maybe that's what they'll do. So they'll go ahead and they'll spend their $4. They're going to do an auction. Well, player one can't beat the four because they have no money. And if you don't have money in this game, you cannot participate in the auction. You can't just throw up a number and say, yeah, I want to participate in that. I'm going to, I'll say $8, even though you don't have it. You have to have the money in order to back up your auction bid. If you don't, you can't bid, period. They're done. So this player is going to go now. And let's see what are we gonna do. They're gonna, I think they're gonna try to gain a whole lot more. They're gonna do some coal, they're gonna do this one. So they get themselves, they're gonna get themselves three coal plus another bonus coal. That is four coal because of their bonus right here. Let's see how many things you got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was a bad play because they went beyond their, their 10 capacity. So they're gonna have to get rid of two of their commodities. I guess they'll have to get rid of those two coals. It is what it is. Wheat will go up by one, and the box will go up by one. That gets there, and then they'll get another card to replenish their hand of production cards. Player two is gonna go, they're just gonna go ahead and they're gonna sell some of their stuff. They're gonna sell some commodities. I think what they're gonna do is they're gonna sell all three of their wine bottles right there, because they are at a max at 10. They can't go anymore. So they'll sell their three wine bottles. The wine bottle is at $6 per wine bottle. So six times three, 18. So they get $18. So here we go. Let me put their cards over here and try to organize this. I sold the wine bottles, right? This goes all the way down to three. 
So whenever you sell commodities, you end you have to drop the value of the commodity if you sell it. I sold three of them. So it goes one, two, three, just like that. It drops one level for every single commodity you sell. Now player one is gonna go and what they're gonna do is they're gonna sell their five, right there, five coal, and they're gonna get four dollars per. And the lowest you can go down to is the very bottom of the market level. You can't just say, okay, I'm selling five and it goes all the way down to negative numbers. That is not possible. So if you get if you if it gets to a point where it's going beyond that value, then it's just it just goes to the bottom. So it's five times four, so they get twenty dollars. Here we go. We got twenty dollars, and you can take the cash the way you feel like it. If you want to take two tens, I mean, I could just do that. I could just take two tens instead of taking a twenty if I want. So this person has two tens now. They're left with that commodity, um, and then this coal will end up dropping all the way down to the bottom level. Now I know in this game I didn't pay. I didn't use a commodity to pay for a town. But right now, this player over here has one iron bar, right? So if I wanted to, I could end up probably, on this player's turn, is I could probably end up, uh, well, see, I don't have any production for iron bars in these cards. But if eventually I'm able, somebody's able to get two iron bars, they could end up buying this molehill and adding that to their player area. Any combination of a railroad plus a town will give them additional victory points. And that is how easy this game is to play. You have buildings you can buy with dollars, you, get, you have railroads you have to auction for, and then you have towns that you can buy with the commodities. The market constantly changes, goes up and down based on those production cards and as you sell. And then at the very end of the game, when you finally end up emptying the town or you emptying the railroad, you're going to count victory points off of your railroad card and the sets of rail cord cards you have, the town cards, the victory points individually for those, plus any two extra victory points for a town and railroad combination. You're gonna get victory points for every building you own, which I think it's, I, I believe it's one victory point per building that you own. And then you total those victory points together and the person that has the most victory points ends up winning the game. I think one of the big key factors in this game is definitely the railroads. The auction seems to be the hardest thing because you have to outbid other people to get them. And you want to get sets of the railroads in order to get more victory points. And that is very interesting to me because that not only do you have to worry about the market that goes up and down, but you end up having to fight to get railroads with other players. And that's super, super cool. Great artwork, simple to play. The money feels good in this game. And that is Raccoon Tycoon. If you guys like this video, please like. And I will see you guys on the next video. Bye, guys.